Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. Um, in this episode, um, I'm going to do a little bit of coding and noding. So the coding bits gonna be um, just a little bit of snippets of Python codes. Um, that's basically allowing you to kind of uh, create something like this. So what is this exactly? This is actually um, me kind of uh, using the the extra objects curve um, Python codes and kind of putting the snippet into spare chop into something that we can kind of uh, modify and adjust on the fly so yeah this probably won't be easy but it's actually a lot easier than actually trying to note this curve um, well actually to make something like this in spare chop is pretty easy but what I mean is that if we actually able to um, let's say able to hack this um, add curve extra objects um, script we basically have all kind of algorithm that's ready for us to be used as a node so that's what I've that's kind of my idea and we can take advantage of spare chop exec node mode uh, yeah, I'll just call this exec node so yeah I'll, let's get started uh, from fresh blender I'm gonna open it another blender real quick delete everything and I'm gonna go to user preferences we know that we have um, two add-on comes inside blender called extra objects one is for the curve and the other one is for the mesh what we want to use is for the curve because um, the curve one is much simpler and it pipes uh, you can pass the data from this curve extra objects very easily into spare job. so for example you have all the, once you en enable that add-on you can go to curve and you have like extra objects to create uh, like all all these basically like uh, curve profiles the one that I really like is this cur curve profiles but there are plenty of others um, but let's focus on just this curve profiles. We have arc, arrow, and all kind of curve. Let's say I'm creating the star, for example. So when you create a, a curve star objects, it looks um, something like this, and nothing particularly fancy. But it's, this is actually, of course, very powerful already. And you have all kind of uh, curve that you can create, and you can output the curve as poly, nurse, bezier, all kind of uh, uh, options there and the cool thing is that this is still alive and you can you can change it to arrow, flower, cycloid I actually um, I actually managed to create some of them as nodes if you've, you've been following my live noting including like okay this petal the flower thing we created um, earlier before I think um, so there's also profile and all kind of fancy curve that really can be useful like uh, the splat one really my favorite um, in my previous live notings few months ago I think I did a script note like kind of uh, also being able to hack this curve but I will try to do this using the exec node so what is uh, so what's the deal with this why do I want to turn this into a node uh, because with the nodes, the, the effect is uh, you can actually create a curve that's alive and you can always make changes to the parameter at any point in time. So I think that's actually really powerful then actually if you're done with the curve and then you, you release it, it's no longer alive. You cannot go back to the parameters uh, unless there's another way to do it. But that's kind of like a once-off job for, for this add-on, right? You go to the curve curve profiles and create a splat and you create like a different kind of splat you randomize the seed you get okay you, you like this splat and you keep it and it's finished so so I was thinking maybe we can kind of look at the script um, and kind of investigate the script so the, what I did actually earlier I try to look at the script um, I know the fact that we can actually import the script like um, like this, so we can import um, 
this add curve extra objects so we can actually do this you see in a, uh, this is the python console of course inside blender and we can import the module this way i tap control space and it gives me all these uh, options of module that we can load including the iv generator at some point i want to do the iv generator and sapling inside sphere chalk but for now just extra objects so extra object has bunch of stuff but um, let's say I'm doing it like this. So import x add curve extra object as um, x curve. So now we can we can dig inside x curve. We can dir we can dir the x curve and inside x curve of course we have the curve galore of add add curve aceous galore. So this is the one actually that that I want to use because if you look at this really quick again curve profile splat and then just hover around it you see this operator is actually bpy bpy dot op smash curvaceous whoops curve profile splat and just hover on it mesh curvaceous galore so i know this is like from this curvaceous galore i'm actually gonna save this as h just call it ace and then we can dir the ace we can look at under the ace we have uh, all this arc curve arrow curve cog curve cycloid flower curve noise curve and all that helix and the one i want to investigate is the the noise curve actually so so there's this noise curve this is actually a function right if I enter it, so by default it generates these points, and this points data we, is something that's dynamic, and we can use it inside Sphereshop if we know how, right? Because uh, you can actually use Python and then check the what's the function uh, of this noise curve. What's the what's the um, what's the usage of this function? You can help. Uh, type help and then you can see this this is the the usage of the curve so you basically use noise curve and then noise curve and then you type in all this parameter as as needed you can say like if it's like number just give like a number parameter you uh, you basically gonna generate uh, 50 points and these points, I'm pretty sure, is something that we can pass into Sphereshop because this is like a list. And that's uh, that's when I actually can switch to Sphereshop. And let's gonna let's do that anyway. So this is like a curve hacking exec using exec node. So I will save this inside Dropbox. Um, normally, I will create like a text editor and then I'll probably put in um, this this guy right here because it's very helpful I'm gonna copy this and paste it here just for just for my reference and now we switch to compositing and enable text editor here so we can see the the script command and the parameters that we can play around with. Remember that we, we actually have access to all those uh, curve um, data that we can generate on the fly. So instead of just coding, noting really what we we need to care about is just uh, how we gonna um, we gonna input and what kind of result we gonna ha have as a as the output. So okay, let's uh, try to grab this let's try to incorporate this um python code inside spiritual spiritual new exec node mode and by default okay this node is a little bit alien but you kind of can guess there is like a, this v1 and v2 and v3 this is the output there's only like three default output uh, input input slot that you can pipe in and here inside it you can provide the 
the x and y um, range like a list of values that and it's gonna give an output uh, well anyway don't worry about that we're gonna just import this noise thing so I'm gonna just type in from add curve extra objects add curve edges actually this is like it's too if it's too long to type you just um, try doing it like this from add curve extra object add curve edges curve Fashes galore. Import noise curve. So you can actually do this from this module in Blender. Just import this noise curve function. So just that functions. We're just gonna copy paste from here. Copy paste it here. So we have this uh, long line gonna import just the noise curve and then here underneath we just we can just type in noise curve and uh, if I just whoops I accidentally reset it paste it here enter and noise curve this guy will not actually do anything so it's gonna give you empty list, but if we actually um, append it to the output, I think so we can do it like this. So we are appending the noise curve, the result of noise curve, the the output of noise curve into the output of this node. We actually get something here right away. Uh, so this we know that this is uh, like a bunch of points so we can perhaps use fewer draw and there you go that's like a curve being generated on the fly but then this is just like using the the default right it's not not so interesting so the way i like to do it um for now just for the basic one I'm gonna create a new line up here and just create a my curve. Just call it my curve, like something silly for now. My curve equal noise curve, and then here we're gonna append the my curve. Yeah, something like that. It's gonna give a result, and it's kind of generating like a random, kind of random, but. If you want to properly like if you don't want to change the curve each time you can use the seed oh it's still kind of changing on every frame interesting but I guess that's because uh, I don't know why but anyhow that's kind of okay uh, so we have kind of just bunch of points just points is uh, not so interesting just so we can use UV connections and UV connection can give you uh, edge right away so points and edge very easy to do in SpreadShop and we can also output it as curve polyline viewer so polyline viewer nodes will take a bunch of points turn it into a curve and this is live very cool and of course this curve by default is uh, how many how many uh, only 100 points we can increase it so we can say okay uh, create a number of like 250 points of curve so this is now actually a little bit more high res so you see the points is a little bit more high res so what else we can put it in uh, look at this parameter down here so number gives you number of points, the type of data should be integer, the length, uh, curve length, type float. Let's try the, the length. Length equal 5. So now we have the length of 5 for the curve. And the length actually, the length and the, the number kind of related. So if you make it like 20 in the length, now we need pro to probably increase the number of points 
to make it smooth so 500 I'll just make it shorter again like 10 so that's all uh, changeable um, by typing it if you like type typing it then that's fine but I don't like to type it I like to kind of scrub it so maybe in the next live loading I will try to incorporate this into that guy but this exact node is um, well in order to make it scrubbable uh, sc you need to kind of use a for you need to use some kind some kind of loop because this this node can do some kind of factorization so a little bit complex maybe I'm not gonna do that now but I know I think that we can create maybe like a a, a couple of curve just by typing it I'm not sure if this is possible uh, maybe it will maybe it will work um, so I append my curve A and here I'll append my curve B maybe this will work and the output I have two curve now uh, and let's see if we have two random vector and okay seems to work yeah seems to work they are they both exactly the same because we are using the same seed so the seed of course we need to change it into different value in order to get a different curve so there you go. Uh, what the functions seems to be loading each time and give me a different result. That's a unfortunate side effect, but at least we have uh, now we have the ability to actually generate a bunch of curve at the same time, you know. And you can always change it. And this is actually live, even though the seed is keep changing. That's a uh, maybe. Maybe there is a way to stop stop it from doing that. We can have another curve. Just append another curve into this guy. So my curve A, curve B, curve C. The output, you can see there's three curves. So we increase this. So now we have three curves. Uh, for the matrix, really, we just need to... Let's have this... Let's do this correctly. Just vector in range in the in the y range float count of three pipe in there so in the y y axis uh -huh. Okay, cool. So there you go. That's the how we can kind of quickly hack into this uh, Blender add-on module, the extra curve, as extra curve object. We just simply basically using Python to grab the module, and then we use the functions because these functions, the fact that this function is will generate points on the fly. We can simply pipe it inside Sphere Job, so it's it's really save a lot of complexity behind um, behind the screen, and I, I found it it's kind of nice uh, to be able to do this. Um, if you are like want to be a, like a, a coders programmers, you probably will dig inside and you will do it uh, using Python codes anyway, and then kind of modify the the functions that way. But if you are like um, kind of like me, I, I like using nodes, and this actually helps me to understand um, a lot of this complexity behind behind the scene. This helps me a lot, and it, maybe at some points I will be better at coding. But for now, this like being able to pipe in a snippet of code and use it right away is very very powerful. Um, of course, remember uh, this has a lot of parameters. So by any, at any point, you can really just type in a new 
new number here. It's like I can make this length of five, make this length of one or uh, two, and this is like different value. And then the curve. Actually, the funny thing about this curve is there's this type as well. So you can put a new type. Oops. Wow, it's just reset itself. Whoa. Uh, I don't. I don't know why <laughs> it's resetting. Resetting itself. Maybe it's. Uh, I accidentally press a wrong button. And this guy. It doesn't work anymore. Mm. Ah, okay. I typed the wrong thing. Okay, let's get back to it. We have type. Uh, and for this, we can change the noise type. There we go. Type 3 and let's try type 5 or type 6. Type 4. So this noise type of the noise type is actually not that interesting. The bass is actually more interesting, I think. So let's change the basis. One of them give like a cell kind of noise. Oh, actually, the one I'm modifying is this guy. That's why I was looking at looking at the wrong thing. Okay, type 4, basis 5, basis 7, 5, uh, actually 6. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's a little bit more interesting. 8, 7, uh, 9. It's 9, seems to be like a cell, cell node. So in, in in the next live noting, probably instead of keep typing this curve, my curve A, B, C, we're gonna try to do this outside here using spread chalk, like gonna generate all these number parameters. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit more uh, streamlined. But for now, really, you can keep adding this line and appending all this my curve A, B, C, D. I'll try a couple more. Maybe you can do this all in one line. Oh, actually, it doesn't work because uh, that's not that's not how it's supposed to work. So like I think uh, coding should be a little bit like this. I, I found this way of coding to be more interesting because you just you get the result right away. For beginners coders, this is going to be really fun like this. So uh, number of links. So re really you are just changing the, the function parameters. It's not too fancy and with programming you you will make a lot of functions and you will change a lot of parameters like this and you will type a lot of numbers I yeah I think in the, in the next live noting I'll try to simplify this and really just use the loop inside the exec node so you can quickly generate all this curve like this and the next actually the next level which is I, I was playing around and you, you can apparently also do it like this. So you can make a bunch of parameters, like kind of like a preset for a curve. And then by doing this, you can let then, you know, just uh, change the numbers to select the preset. I don't know, this, this one is kind of a little bit 
weird. It's still experimental, but uh, it's a really good way to kind of dig into um, Blender Python module and look at it. And it, okay, so apparently, what this um, what this code does is give you ability to use these functions, and then you can check the functions, and the functions will give you all kind of algorithms. So yeah, so that's uh, what I found more interesting in, in terms of learning programming. I know programming used to be like uh, used to feel like this. See, I don't I don't know this language. Uh, if I look at yeah, you know, a while back ago, before I learned programming, programming looks like this. I don't understand what what this means, and really I, I was a bit scared. But these days, I kind of um, not so scared with coding anymore so I know that codes uh, has functions at the very basics you run a functions and you can get a result um, if the function is made to do it this way like uh, in this case to generate points and then to give us this ability to to draw points on the fly so I, I found it kind of cool but without but of course, like before, you remember when you're typing the functions and you just get a bunch of numbers? That will be scary unless unless you know, okay, that numbers you can is a bunch of points, vectors, values that you can you can use to create curve, then your brain is kind of okay. So it's not that scary really, it's just these functions will generate this and the functions will come with a lot of parameters. So yeah, so that's I think very very good example if you want to learn uh, coding and you want to kind of give this concept to a person who never codes and once they understand that concept then you can tell this you can actually generate your own functions that will generate all kind of codes and you can make a lot of uh, like uh, custom functions it's, it's amazing what you can do with it of course of course, that only cover functions, and with the functions, you can say you can loop it one hundred times, so you have like one hundred different um, output, and you can use the outputs to generate one hundred different curves. In this case, you know, just curve. Uh, remember that this add curve extra objects has a lot of module, not just this noise curve. You have the flower one, you have petal ones. There are so many, and you can you can do this turn it into a node, give it to someone, and it's becoming so easy, you know? It's a lot easier than a lot, uh, lots more streamlined than actually you have to go to this UI and then kind of generate another curve and then adjust the parameter. That becomes really boring really quickly, even though that's, um, if you're like a beginner Blender user, then that's fine. You can just create a, one curve and then render it out but if you you are like a little bit more advanced, you want to do, you want to create hundred curve, and this is maybe one way you can do it. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this live coding. Hopefully, this is useful. If you are a beginners coder, or and you also like to do some noting, coding and noting at the same time, this is I think a good way to do it. So. Yeah, let me know what you think. This is a little bit long, uh, sorry, but uh, if you have any suggestions, feedbacks, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.